This is a new Sage Storm King, a US made and designed gravel bike. And it's everything you expect from a modern gravel and adventure bike. So massive tire clearance, hydraulic disc brakes, a one by drivetrain, a wide flared handlebar, even a dropper pace. And what's this old thing over here, you wonder? Well, this is here to help me answer the question of whether a gravel bike is nothing more than a 90s mountain bike. So this is the epitome of a 90s mountain bike, a Kona Lava Dome from 1991. And it couldn't be more different to that Sage over there. So really long stem, flat handlebar, bar ends, cantilever brakes, small 26 inch wheels, triple chain set, seven speed cassette. How many two bikes side by side, separated as they are by 29 years of evolution and development. They do make for an interesting comparison, but what are they like to ride? Well, let's dive in. So the Storm King is their latest gravel and adventure bike with an emphasis on wide tire clearance. There's space for up to a 700 by 50 or 650 by 61. So very generous by today's standards. And they've achieved a the tire clearance in a number of ways. The most notable is the very curved seat tube, which really stands out a very distinctive detail on that bike. And what that does is allow them to keep the chain stays quite short, keep the rear wheel tucked in for a short wheelbase and nimble handling, whilst improving the tire clearance at the back there. As well as that curved seat tube, the rear stays are also very curved. So the seat stays curve around the rear tire and pinch in again and then flow out to the dropouts. And it's the same with the chain stays. And they've also removed the bridge at the chain stay to further increase tire clearance. And riding through the Cotswolds winter with lots and lots of mud, the tire clearance has been a massive benefit on the bike. So no issues of clogging and you're not carrying around extra weight from the mud that builds up on the frame as I found on that 3T Explorer Race Max a little while ago. There are lots of other nice, sensible details on this bike, like a T47 threaded oversized bottom bracket, a standard developed by Chris King and Argonaut quite a few years ago, two US companies trying to solve the problems with press fit bottom brackets, and being adopted by big companies like Trek and small companies like Sage. And through the months of riding, I've had the bike, been no issues at all with creaking or squeaking or anything like that. Then we have a dropper post compatible seat tube, as you can see here, external seat clamp, big oversized head tube with a Chris King headset and modular cable routing. So it's internal for the dropper post and the rear brake hose, but external for the gear cable. And you can fit to a front mech as well if you don't want the one by system we have here. Well, this is quite a bit different, isn't it? Who feels old looking at this? This came out in 1991. I was 11 years old and it's the epitome of an early 90s mountain bike where mountain bikes really started diverging from the original repack bikes of the 70s and started on a path towards where mountain bikes are these days and they have come a long long way since the bike came out but this was state-of-the-art cutting edge when it launched and we have a chromoly double butted frame with a signature very sloping top tube which is an idea developed by Joe Murray, hence the name on the bike. He designed this frame and this sloping compact frame design really was a big move in the mountain bikes. So it increased the standover clearance, made the bike stiffer, made them easier to handle off-road. The build on these two bikes couldn't be more different and really represents how much bike tech has changed and evolved over the years. The Sage is very nicely built up with a Shimano GRX one by group set with powerful hydraulic disc brakes while the left lever operates a dropper post. NV carbon fiber wheels keep the weight low and are designed to be tough for off-road riding. The matching short NV stem and wide flared handlebar increase control when riding off-road. The Kona shows just how far bikes have developed and changed over the years. We have a Shimano triple chain set with a seven speaker set, cantilever brakes, a very long stem, narrow handlebar and massive bar ends. So it's a world away from that gravel bike and a million miles away from a modern mountain bike. But the geometry makes an interesting comparison between this and the gravel bike. So looking at geometry differences between the two, it's actually really interesting. And what's surprising is how similar these two bikes are. Early mountain bikes weren't that far from road bikes at a time. 
As such, they have similar head angles, similar seat angles, the same chainstay and wheelbase length. It's startling just how similar the two bikes are in many ways. But I think that says more about how mountain biking has progressed, moving further and further away from the road DNA that is present in the 90s mountain bike to bikes that actually work on the sort of trails mountain bikes are being used for these days. So let's talk about how it rides. And I'll be riding it for the last couple of months here in the Cotswolds through all sorts of weather. And what this bike does really well is put a big smile on your face. It's a really fun, agile bike in the woods on single track trails like we have here. It turns really fast, really nimble in the corners. Got a wide flared handlebar, the short stem and drop post. Really lets you have fun on quite uh, challenging, intimidating perhaps descents where other gravel bikes can be a bit held back. This bike really lets you uh, carry a lot of speed into the corners, down rough descents. Just a really good fun bike. And the tire clearance has been a massive bonus as well. It gets quite muddy here, it has to be said, like most places in the UK in the winter, but the tire clearance on this bike has been incredible. Now I did change the tires because these aren't so good in the mud as I found out with a crash on my first ride, but with the right tires fitted, there's loads of tire clearance. And you've got loads of options for going as wide as you want, but sticking with a 40, 42 mil wide tire with some big blocks on, I had loads of traction and loads of clearance. And the clearance means that the mud doesn't stick to a frame in the same way that I found with that 3T Explorer Race Max recently, link above if you missed that. So if you're riding through really tough conditions, this is a good bike for that riding. Uh, no issues with clearance at all. So fun, definitely fast, um, agile handling, uh, lots of accessory mounts. So a really good option for bike packing adventure riding. You can definitely use it for racing, fast riding, but for me, I see the bike really suiting the person who wants to explore, go adventuring, load it up with accessories and bags, some big chunky tires, and just go adventuring in the mountains or the woods. Um, and a bike that definitely puts a smile on your face in terms of how it handles um, and can handle you know, really quite challenging trails or have fun on the single track trails that you might normally ride a mountain bike on. So what is a bike like this to ride? Well, it's... Um, it's an interesting and fascinating experience riding a bike like this, as used to modern road gravel and mountain bikes as I am. It feels really sluggish at low speed. It just takes quite a lot of effort to get up to any speed at all. And then you have the ride position, which feels really long and low as well. So the front end feels really low. And on a descent, it does feel alarmingly sketchy, it has to be said. There's no drop post as well, which doesn't help on descents. And not helping on descents are the woeful brakes, which are awful really. So a horrible lever feel, no power at all really. So just a shocking um, reminder of how bad brakes were back in the day and thankfully how much they have improved. The gears work okay, considering the age, they still change gear okay. But you have three chambers at the front to manage, which is quite tricky and early seven sprockets at the back. So while the range isn't so bad, you spend a lot of time changing gear, trying to find the right gear. And in the mud, that triple chain set with the front mech really clogs up compared to the simplicity of the one bike on a gravel bike. For riding tame trails, so gravel tracks and forest trails that were the all of the day back in the 90s before trail centers were ever developed or even thought about, the bike was fine and it still rides okay on a sort of trail today. But when a gravel bike really pulls ahead, it's in its capability on rougher trails with the drop post, the disc brakes, it's better on steep climbs because it's lighter and has wider gear range. And it's better on the road as well. So for the riding we're doing with gravel bikes where you're mixing off-road trails with road sections to link it all together, the gravel bike works much better. You've got more position for the drop handlebars. You've got faster rolling wheels and tires. You've got better gears, you've got better brakes for riding off-road. It's not all bad though. The one area where the mountain bike shines is the handlebar position. Although it's quite a long stem and it's quite low at the front, alarmingly low it has to be said. The flat handlebar position actually works okay off-road as anybody who's ridden a mountain bike will know. That riding position does give you a bit more control compared to the sort of hood or drop position you have on a gravel bike. But it's not enough of a benefit over all the other benefits of a modern gravel bike to give this an advantage on off-road trails. Doing this comparison has been a lot of fun. And it definitely helped me answer that question, 
of whether a gravel bike is nothing more than a 90s mountain bike. Because while on paper the geometry might be quite close between the two, the way they ride on the trail and on the road couldn't be more different if you tried. And simply put, the gravel bike is far, far better than a 90s mountain bike. And I would definitely pick the bike over this one, as nice and cool as this bike is. So for me, there's a clear difference between a 90s mountain bike and a modern gravel bike, even though on paper the geometry is quite similar, that's only half the story. Everything else on the gravel bike makes it so much better for riding the sort of trails that these bikes were designed for back in the 1990s. So it's clear to me that a gravel bike is far, far superior to a 90s mountain bike. And for me, it really puts to bed this whole idea that a gravel bike is nothing but a 90s mountain bike. The purpose of this video, of course, was to review the new Sage Storm King. So what is my final verdict then? Well, it's easily a big thumbs up from me. It's a bike that over the last few months of riding has put a smile on my face every single time I've ridden it, whether it's snowing, raining, windy, or just muddy out on the trails, which it seems to be most of the time. I love the way the titanium frame provides a nice smooth ride on rough tracks and trails. I love the handling that is fun, fast and agile in the woods. It really excels in single track trails and with a dropper post and wide fled handlebar, it's a real hoot on fast descent. Titanium is of course an expensive option and buying from the US does put the price up a little bit compared to buying from a more local frame builder. But the level of options they provide, both in how it looks and the geometry and other details is quite extensive as well. It's definitely worth checking out their website for more uh, information on how they customize the builds to suit different customers. But I love the way the bike looks and the way it's built. There's nothing I would change on this bike if I had the money to buy it. Lovely MV carbon wheels, handlebar and stem, the drop post and a comfy saddle. The Shimano GRX one by group set is reliable, although not the biggest range compared to SRAM and Campag. A uh, nice threaded bottom bracket, really neat details. It looks really good. I love the curve of the seat tube and all the other details on it. So it is a really good looking bike as well, providing excellent performance off-road and on-road as well. For me, I put this bike in the more adventure exploring category of gravel bike. While it's fast on a road and gravel, it's not as fast as an aero gravel bike like a Cervelo Espero or 3T Explorer Race Max. But for me, the mud clearance and the way it handles twisty trails and fast descents makes it a better bike for more pure off-roading where it's quite rough and quite challenging and you want to load it up with bags, accessories and just go exploring uh, post-lockdown when we can go uh, exploring again. So definitely a fun, adventure-focused gravel bike for me. That has been my review of a Sage Storm King and a fun comparison with a 90s mountain bike. Do let me know what you think of this bike and this comparison in the comment section down below. Love to know your thoughts on this and I'm sure your reaction will be quite an interesting one so I can't wait to read the comments. But with all that said, I will see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.